Hey guys, so we're back with Espen Matisse and again, we're gonna be covering some diving back takes. Often when you're trying to pass the guard versus a flexible opponent, they'll stack themselves so they keep their feet up over their head really high and it can be difficult to pass. So this diving back take is a really effective way to just directly take your opponents back from there. And on top of it, it's like really flashy looking, so it's a really fun technique. Okay guys, so today we're gonna to look at back take from stacking. So this is a position that can occur quite a lot from different scenarios. And the cool thing about it, it's very effective and it's very unexpected. So people are not expecting you doing it. So a lot of times you maybe try to stack and that can be quite tricky when people are flexible. So having the option of going for the back take is a very good move to have in your arsenal. So there's different scenarios where you have the person stacked. So the first one, we're just gonna look at the traditional stack position, okay? So whenever you're stacking someone, I like to grab uh, their hip here, okay? So the thing I'm focusing when I'm doing the back take from the stacking position, first of all, I want to stack them properly. So I don't want their hip to be too low like this. So I'm foc focusing on having a good stack. And then my thought is just getting my knee over uh, hooking their leg. And the reason why I'm doing this is then when I'm hooking and jumping, my leg gonna fall under their body. If my leg is not under their body, it's very hard to move and start getting the back. So I want my knee to be under, so I can use this motion to lift him. While doing that, I'm gonna throw my heel in and use both my heel and my knee to pull him, like this. And from here, I have the back. I'm able to stack him, I'm in good position here. What I'm looking for is to get this leg here and then tread my knee under a zip while using the other hook to hook uh, on the other side. So look here. And from there, you have the back. So this is one position where it can occur. Uh, sometimes when I'm passing, I end up in the opposite stack. So I'm on, I'm on the opposite side, but the same principles matter. I wanna grab the hip to have him stacked. I wanna have my knee over, so my knee gets under his hip. And then I just jump again. And from here, use my heel, pull with my leg and my arm. And there, I have the back. I'm passing, we end up in this position. I go here, from this position, I like to have both my knees here, which maintain, then it's easy to maintain the stack. Okay, and from here, I jump, get my knee under, heel here, and I take the back. Another scenario that happens a lot is when people are playing reverse heave on me and they try to spin under and take, and do the kiss of the dragon, okay? So whenever I feel that, what I'm doing, so we start to spin, I'm popping this, okay? And I'm putting this to the ground. Now we have a stacked position. So I'm stacking him and the same principle as before, my knee on top of his leg and then I'm jumping. And from here, you have the back. All right guys, so just a little extra context of how this fits into like a passing game. Whenever I'm approaching the guard, I have to make my decision based off of their leg positioning, right? So uh, I'm always looking, and I've done videos on this before, I'll put it in the description on how I assess entering the guard, but I'm usually looking at how wide the guy's legs are, are they low, are they high? So if I approach and the guy's legs are low, then I'm usually looking for more like a Toriando sequence, maybe entering on a knee cut if they're wide. But when the guy's legs are up higher, you really do have to stack, right? Because if I like to do Toriandos or knee cuts, uh, you know, it's really hard to pull the legs down when they do this. And this is something a lot of flexible guys will do. So I try to get as close as I can before I go for the stack, because if I'm really far away and I start pushing up, he'll make his heels heavy, right? So I try to get close first. If his legs are low, fine. Then I'll Toriando and start passing that way. But as I approach, I kind of seize here. I'll use my forearms first to feel out the legs. Then I switch to the hands and I pin the stack, right? And of course you can do the normal stack passes, but when guys are really flexible here, it can be a bit tricky, right? So that's where mixing this in and really diving in and going for these, it's not only is it really flashy looking, it really is a powerful attack sequence that's gonna complete your overall passing game if you don't have any good stacking pressure. Um, also, you know, if you like to stack a lot, it's really worth, um, it's kind of interesting because like, or if you're a passer who do, does double underhook all the time, go to your back then usually when you do double underhook all the time, guys will start dropping their legs low all the time and that's hard. So then coming up and doing the Toriandos. But if you're more of a Toriando knee cut uh, outside passer, you actually tend to have a harder time with this and that's where that's gonna really fit in.
So there's actually a few other different diving back takes you can do, but we'll save that for another video. Also guys, if you like the content, Espen has a YouTube channel as well. I think it's just Espen Matisse and BJJ, right? Espen Matisse. Espen what? Espen Matisse. Espen Matisse. Right? Yeah, just straight out. Just Espen Matisse, okay. Yeah. Let's do that again. Okay. <laughs> uh, also guys, Espen has a YouTube channel as well, so he's gonna be putting out more content soon. Not only technique breakdowns like this, but also like breakdowns of like big matches. You actually did a few back in the past that were really good as well. I think he did one on like Paulo Miao's uh, like Baron Bolo, as well as like Leandro Lowe's bump stuff. So be sure to subscribe and check out that channel as well. As always, if you guys like the content, like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.